In this video, I will be showing how we place a feeding tube in a large lizard. Feeding tubes are often placed when an animal is not eating and we need to make sure they get the calories and medications necessary to improve. A lot of times we will place these in reptiles that are difficult to orally medicate and feed, especially turtles and tortoises. Depending on the species, they're fed either an herbivore, omnivore, or carnivore critical care liquefied diet. In this case, we are placing it in a tegu named Symphony, an ambassador animal for the North Texas Reptile Rescue. She was recently egg bound. Here is an x-ray of her completely filled with eggs. Another vet was the one that performed the surgery to remove them, so unfortunately I don't have a video of that. Even though the surgery went well, she was refusing to eat or drink and it was becoming increasingly difficult to give her sub-Q fluids and get calories into her. So we elected to place a feeding tube. If you've ever placed one in a cat, then the process is very similar. She was sedated with an intramuscular injection of alfaxalone. We cleaned the area with chlorhexidine and alcohol and I numbed the area with a small injection of lidocaine. I pre-measured the red rubber catheter with a sharpie so I would know just how far to place it before suturing it in. In cats, you're supposed to place it cranial to the lower esophageal sphincter so it does not cause irritation. However, I've been told this is less of an issue with reptiles as some vets will place it directly into the stomach. Once it's measured, I take a curved hemostat and pass it through the mouth and into the esophagus. I then use the tips of it to apply direct pressure against the skin. It is extremely important to be very mindful of the jugular and carotid vessels which course down the neck. Although it's not common, accidentally cutting through either of these structures can lead to severe complications. Once you're confident in your placement, then make a stab incision through the skin directly over the hemostats. The forceps are then pushed through the small stab incision and used to grab the feeding tube. Then, the feeding tube is pulled into the esophagus and out of the mouth. In order to redirect it in the proper direction, the tip of the tube is then turned around and pushed back down the esophagus. Once you're sure that you're in the esophagus, which is much easier to do in reptiles as the opening to their trachea is more cranial than mammals, the feeding tube is then advanced to the previously marked position and secured using a purse string and Chinese finger trap suture. Some vets will use tape to make butterfly wings and then suture those to the reptile, which is another alternative However, I was trained to do a purse string. The Chinese finger trap suture is one of my favorites as it kind of feels like tying a friendship bracelet. The one trick is to make sure it's not too loose. Those knots have to be pretty tight in order to not allow the tube to be pulled out. Once done with the sutures, we went to take an x-ray to make sure it's in the proper spot. I was pretty happy with how the placement looked. Then I secured the rest of the tubing on the other side. If this was a turtle or tortoise, we would just loop the tube around and tape it to the back of the shell. However, tegus are super agile and smart, so I wanted some extra assurance it wouldn't fall out. And there we have it, successful placement of a feeding tube. I'm happy to say that within just a few weeks of tube feeding, Symphony was feeling much better and eating on her own. Here she is back at the hospital for tube removal. It's not painful at all, so we don't have to sedate her for this. All we have to do is cut the sutures and pull the tube on out. The hole does not need to be sutured or closed manually as the stoma site closes up on its own. If desired, you can cover it with a bandage and use triple antibiotic. Just make sure you keep it clean when it's healing and you're good to go.